Okay, I am starting a new cup today. I am working on a 30 ounce skinny this time. And I am doing a vinyl wrap for the first step. I printed these on printable vinyl at home from a set from Creative Fabrica. And then I have all of these wonderful oceany critters, spooky, witchy ones from the same set. So this is going to be the top piece of my three pieces of vinyl. So this box is about five inches tall. I'm going to take a dry erase marker and put it up to the cup. And I'm just going to spin the cup to get myself a guideline of where to start this first piece of vinyl. So I'm just going to spin it, spin it, spin it. I do want it to start out kind of straight. Okay. So I'm going to grab my cup cradle. And I'm going to get it on there. I will put the links to this brand of vinyl and the um, image set, all of that, down in the description below. I gotta get it where I can see it, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna go right above that line. And I will have a little bit of overhang at the top because I printed and cut this at about five and a half. Look at that. Perfect. So, I'm going to fold the top in. And then I'm going to take a sharp blade and well, what should be a sharp blade, but I apparently already used too much. <clears throat> and I'm going to travel around the rim and then pull that excess out. I'm still going to have to clean that up a little bit, but no biggie. I did tear it a tiny bit, but that's probably more because it's printed at home and a thinner vinyl than my blade necessarily. All right, so... I'll clean that up in a minute. I'll probably sand it down just a bit. I'm going to find my seam and grab my next piece of vinyl. And if you want, you can just at that point grab a rag, depending on what paint you use, how your cup is prepped, your dry erase line ought to clean off pretty easily. if you're worried about it showing through or anything like that. So, next strip, I'm just gonna peel completely to start because it's skinny. And I'm just going to wrap this one right along under. And that I'm going to say I cut unevenly, but I'm not worried about it. This third piece will go over it. 
at the end. This one's a little bit thicker. This one should bring me over the bottom lip a little bit. I am finding that I have favorite designers on Digital Curio. Um, and this set is from one of my very favorites, Digital Curio. So, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to put a thin purple line on here in a minute. And I'm going to put a piece of vinyl over all of this. So I'm just going to start stretching my center in. And this is not going to be neat and perfect. Um, the bottoms always end up with, especially on the printed vinyl, um, the actual vinyl vinyl has a little bit more stretch, so you might get a little less creasing, but the printed stuff gets a little bit harder to stretch. So that's on there. I'm going to take my blade again and I'm going to cut just inside this lip because I'm going to come in and cap this with a circle in a minute. to measure for my circle. So if I wanted to cover the whole bottom, I'm just over three inches. If I just wanted to do the center, I'm going to cut about two and a half. So I'm actually going to go about 2.75 on this one. So I'm going to get that cut. I'm going to get my purple strips for here because I want to pull a little bit more of the purple in in the break so I will be back okay so I have my purple strips cut so I'm just going to start them in the same place And just get them around the cup. And these might be a little longer, so I'm going to have to trim them because I don't want the seams way off. They might not be perfect, but they don't have to be completely messy. And do the other one, same thing. Okay, striped. That out of the way. I have this piece cut and I'm going to go to the bottom of the cup and this is actually a piece from a misprint from this so that's what I decided to go with and I like to start in the center and work my way out when I apply vinyl to the bottoms just make sure it's secured down so your epoxy doesn't get under there and lift it. So next step, it's going to get epoxy. I'm going to do a um, liquidy split coat on it so I'll be ready to move on quicker. And then I'm going to get these cut so I can get them applied. Um, so 
I'm going to get my layer of epoxy on. Once that's on, that's just going to be a regular old clear coat, nothing fancy. Um, and you know what? I'll bring you along for that because I think I'm going to use a little tiny bit of the diamond dust in here. So I will be right back when my resin is mixed. Okay, my cup is on my turner and I have my epoxy mixed. I just got to figure out which of these plugs goes to this turner. There we go. So I'm going to use a little bit of my girl's best friend diamond dust cheat. This is super fine and powdery. I tell you that every time I use it. I don't recommend working on a solid cup when you're mixing this, but I'm only going to use, I have 30 mLs mixed up. I'm going to give this a good coat to start with. So I'm just going to use like three little scoops like that. Put my cap back on. And I'm just going to mix that in. And I'm going to apply it using the wet method. The wet method is when you put your additive directly into your resin versus the epoxy method where you put the epoxy on the cup and put the additive on top. I'm going with a pretty heavy coat because I have these borders and I have these bumps on the bottom, all things that need to be well covered. So, but this additive, um, because it's so thin, I'll be able to go straight to those water slides um, as soon as this is dry enough. And because I'm using the liquidy split, it's only going to be two to three hours for absolute max, but um, I'm thinking two to three the way it is out today. It's pretty nice. It's pretty toasty in here. So should be good to go later on. So just get that smoothed out. I love the way that looks over that green center stripe. Holy moly. It's gorgeous. Okay. So I'm going to let this spin and do its thing for a couple hours. Look at that. A bug. Um, at least I got them before I left the room. Um, and I will be back to apply those water slides. And I'm going to grab those because I'm going to get these gloves off. I'm actually going to torch this real quick. Just once around to pop any bubbles. Real quick. Um, the fast sets don't like a lot of heat. So this I printed and sealed. Um, this is a new paper to me. I have another video going with it to test it for the company. But this is the Koala brand. Water slide paper in clear. Um, you spray seal everything first before you cut because you want to cut... I'm not going to do these on camera over my wet cup, but you cut fairly close and you want to make sure you get every edge where the sealant was because you don't want to end up with your slide sealed to your backing paper and you don't really want a visible edge. So I actually tested by sealing this in gloss when I normally use matte just to see if it makes a difference on the edges under the resin and over the resin. Um, I actually think I prefer the way the mat works though. So, um, and Courtney's Customs has already put a video up where she tested her paper and she said she only sealed it once, which kind of makes sense to me because 
the way I seal mine, I actually ended up with some of the sealers seeping in from the back of my paper. It seems to have gone away once it completely dried, mostly, but you can see here where it seeped in the back. And I'm really hoping that's not going to affect the transfer, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna get all my little critters cut apart and let this dry, and then I will be back to assemble it. Okay, I am ready to put the water slides on this. I have a little thing of water, I have my cup, and I have all my water slides cut. So I'm going to start with the biggest piece, which is the Venus in the bunch. So I'm gonna get that wet. I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel and get the cup damp. where it's going to go. And I'm going to, and this is one of those little spots where I um, sealed too well. So my bottom is gonna be a little bit stuck where it was on the edge. This other edge is going to be a little bit stuck as well. There. I had sealed aggressively enough that it, um, yep, it leaked back up off of what I had it taped to, to the bottom. Completely error on my own part. I sealed the way I seal my other slides and it was a little too aggressive and I think this little guy this is a mermaid skeleton is going to do the same thing so I guess it's a girl I'm trying to decide where I want to put it I think I'm gonna put it right on the back side there and then I'm gonna start filling in with all the little fun things a little bit wet. I'm doing this right over the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a couple in at a time. I'm going to do these four pieces of seaweed because if I layer over them a little bit and I don't have her anywhere near centered. But I'm not sure I can lift her at this point without cracking her. I don't think I can. So I'm not going to worry about it. Just put an even bigger scene over here. Start layering things in. things in here at a time, just at random. That way I can just grab and move.
I picked that one up whole. Some blotting out a little bit. And some of these are going to end up layered because there's quite a few of them to go on. Gonna get the rest of them in the water. Oh, my poor little fishy. And I do want to do a couple upside down to see how that works with this brand. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest that way at this point. Because it's nothing that can't go the opposite direction. This little Ely guy down here. And I'm gonna put this big old catfish on the bottom. And the catfish I did get a little scissor happy and cut its nose off, so I have to put its nose back in place by hand. Poor thing. My fault. So I'm just going to spin the cup around and look and see where I want to put these last couple of shells. Try around the seaweed a little bit. One more scallop shell to put somewhere. Okay. So. So it's very much a collage type cup. Which I knew what was going to be going into this. I'm going to clean up a little bit. So I can double check the cup. And. Um. Make sure nothing's wrinkled or squished. Just trying to dry off my area a little bit. And I want one. And I'm going to just lay it on two. So I'm going to set it down gently. A 
cuts out any edges. I'm just kind of looking to see if they're all good. And they went on just as easy sliding them off as layering them on. So that was cool. So I'm going to set this to the side and let it finish drying. And then come back in with its final coat of epoxy. I do not know what this little white spot is from. I'm going to have to deal with it, though. It's just weird. I do have a little wrinkle in her. And I know it's from where I ripped her and pulled her a little bit. But that's it till I get epoxy on it. So I will be back for that. Okay, so I'm just getting the top coat on this. I already poured some on. My phone apparently stopped recording, so, you know, that happens. But this is just getting a light top coat. I didn't add anything extra. It's just resin, so I'm going to take my glove off. And this coat got KS Resin Liquid Stone. Um it might be the top coat so I'm gonna bring you down for a close-up in just a second sorry about that I just had to grab a wipe and clean my hands off quick I absolutely love this so that fish on the bottom there he is I mean I know you can see the wrinkles across the bottom but it is what it is it's vintagey looking anyways, so. But, there she is. And I thank you for watching, and I appreciate you.